let's look at the global scale of the outbreak of COVID-19. Johns Hopkins University have been live tracking and monitoring the outbreak and updating this map for us to take a look at. And some of the key things you need to know is the total number of confirmed infections across the globe, a number now sitting at just under two and a half million cases. Now, we must say these are the confirmed number of cases. Authorities do believe that the figure would be significantly higher than that. But our attention has shifted at the beginning of the year it was here in Asia where the outbreak originated. Then the World Health Organization designated Europe as the epicenter of the outbreak and now attention focuses to America where in the US we've now seen nearly 800,000 confirmed infections. But let's look at the continent of Europe and some grim news. France has now joined Spain and Italy in registering over 20,000 deaths related to coronavirus. There is some more positive news, though. In all of those three countries, the daily number of new infections is starting to decline. And what authorities are calling a positive development in Italy is that for the first time since the outbreak began in Italy, the number of people confirmed to have the infection has declined. Well, Evelyn Laverick, our reporter, starts our coverage by giving us an overview of the cases around the continent. Spain has reported a one-day drop in the death toll from COVID-19 for the first time bringing it below the 400 mark since the crisis was declared a pandemic. Italy saw a rise of 454 new deaths from coronavirus on Monday, but for the first time the number of people who are currently infected fell. And France has become the fourth country to register more than 20,000 deaths, but still says the number in intensive care has fallen for the 12th consecutive day. Positives are being drawn from figures, while still realising each death remains a tragedy for thousands of families. The World Health Organisation is refusing to get carried away and issued a warning about relaxing lockdowns. Ending the epidemic will require a sustained effort on the part of individuals, communities and governments to continue suppressing and controlling this deadly virus. The WHO chief's comments come as Germany and other parts of Europe began taking tentative steps to ease lockdown measures. Some smaller shops reopened in Cologne as Europe's largest economy began to restart public life after a four-week shutdown. I'm optimistic, and I always will be, but I'm still cautious. But it's nice that everything is coming back. Norway is reopening nurseries, and in Denmark, hairdressers are ready for business much to the relief of their clients. As soon as I saw there was an opening, I booked, and I was lucky to get one at 8 a.m. Small steps towards normality, but ones too large for some governments. Fear of relaxing restrictions too soon and sparking a second wave of infections, as some preferring to watch and wait. Even Laverick, Euronews.